what are the words that come to your mind when you hear the word agent these are not the only kind of agents or agencies that exist agency contract is such an extensive topic i can talk about it for hours but definitely we don't have that much time right so we'll keep it short and split it in parts and without any further ado let's get into it hey guys my name is akash i am a second year law student in south calcutta law college and you are watching love it and this video is part 1 of the agency contract series okay so before getting into the nitty gritty of agency contracts let's have some context because context is important okay so in the syllabus of calcutta university and i can only talk about calcutta university but i'm sure the syllabus will be kind of similar in all the universities across india and even if it is not agency contract will be somewhere in your curriculum too so keep watching so in the syllabus of cu contract is split into two semester the first and the second semester in the first semester we have the general principles of contract which includes the formalities of making a contract what can invalidate a contract who are eligible to get into a contract the basic stuffs in the second same we have special contracts some of the special contracts would be indemnity and guarantee contract sale of goods contract contract of agency etc etc so why are they special see these contracts though they possess the basic structure and principles of a contract but they in themselves possess some unique characteristics some peculiar characteristics that that makes them different from others just like you this makes them special right fair enough let's get into today's topic agency contract okay firstly let's try to figure out who is an agent and who is an principal let's say simply a person can get into a contract with another person by himself or through a third party when a person gets into a contract with another person through a third party this third party will be called an agent and on whose behalf this agent is getting into a contract will be considered as the principal a most simple example would be suppose i tell you to buy movie tickets for me in this case you are the agent and i am the principal i am getting into a contract with the ticket sellers through you so the ticket sellers are the party with whom you are getting into contract i am the principal because i am mainly getting into the contract and you will be the agent because i am getting into the contract with the ticket sellers through you okay the first things first all the aspects of agency contract are included in section 182 to 238 of the Indian Contract Act 1872 the point of telling you this is that this is a codified law so keep a bear act handy please all right now let's take baby steps firstly if you are creating an agency there are some essentials and you need to follow it obviously let's see what they are number 1 there must be an agreement between the principal and the agent Section 185 of the contract talks about this. So the principal and the agent must have a agreement between themselves regarding the creation of agents. Understand that the payment of consideration is not necessary here. That is you do not necessarily need to pay your agent for your work. If the agent agrees to do your work, that would be enough. This if you remember is in direct contradiction of the general notion that payment of consideration is necessary for creating a contract. And hence the name special contract number 2 the agent must intend to work for the principal this is kind of similar to the first point the agent should have intention for working for the principal and i have already explained it in the first point now a question should arise as to what are the acts that can be done through an agent the general consensus is that whatever a man can do personally he can do that through an agent of course there are major exceptions like you cannot marry through an agent If you are asked to be present in front of the court you cannot do that through an agent cool the next topic of discussion is qui facit per se altum facit per se now don't get panic it's a name not a monster <laughs> see the maxim means the acts of an agent are the acts of a principal that is an agent's acts and contracts will have the same legal effect as if they were entered by the principal himself okay so moving on Let's solve these two quick questions. The answer to the first question is that anyone. Anyone, 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 anyone. Yes, literally anyone, even persons who does not have contractual abilities like minors or person of unsound mind. 
The reason behind this is that a uh, agent is not getting into a contract in his own behalf. He is getting into a contract on the behalf of his principal. So it is not necessary that an agent has contractual abilities. But a quick pro tip, if you are a principal, you would not want to employ a person who does not have contractual abilities as your agent because that person will not be liable to you for any mishap that may have occurred because of their acts or because the kind of contracts they have got into. So if you are a principal, it would be better if you don't employ a person of unsound mind or a minor as your agent. Now to answer the second question as to who can employ an agent, anybody who has contractual abilities can employ an agent. So basically a major person of sound mind can legally employ an agent. Alright, our next topic of discussion is creation of agencies. What are the different ways in which an agency can be created? Let's see. Number one, by express agreement. Number two, by implied agreement. Number three, by ratification. And number four, by operation of law. In today's video, we'll discuss the first two topics and the remaining two we will discuss in subsequent videos. So let's go one by one. The first topic that is uh, agency by express agreement is very simple. Suppose Mr. X gives Mr. Y the authority to act as his agent by word of mouth or by a written document that is by giving the power of attorney to Mr. Y. That would be creating agency by express authority. As simple as that. But sometimes the delegation of authority is implied. That is creation of agency by implied authority. Let's understand by example. Suppose you have a shop in Kolkata but you don't live here. So you have kept one Mr. X to manage your shop. Now Mr. X buys goods from Mr. Y in your name for the purpose of the shop and pays him out from your fund and with your knowledge. Now it will be understood that Mr. X has your implied authority to buy goods for the purpose of the shop in your name. There was no express agreement between you and Mr. X for regarding the agency but the action of both the parties has implied the existence of the agency. Fair enough? Now we'll get into a bit more details, shall we? An agency can be implied in three ways. The ways are on your screen right now. Agency by estoppel, agency by holding out, and agency by necessity. Let's get into the details of agency by estoppel. What does the word even mean? Forget agency contract. The doctrine of estoppel says that once a person has agreed to something, given consent to something or has said something, he is not allowed to subsequently deny or step back from his statement. For example, suppose I tell you in the presence of A that I am an agent of A. A hears that but remains silent. Later, if you do any transaction with me with the belief that I am an agent of A, A will be liable to pay any amount that I have promised to you. By keeping silent, A has led you to believe that I am actually his agent and now he cannot step back from his consent. Agency by holding out is kind of a similar concept to agency by estoppel. Here a prior positive or affirmative act is required on the part of the principal for the creation of agency. I know it's not clear, I'll give an example. Suppose A allows B to buy stuff from C's shop in credit in name of A for a long period of time. Now one day, A gave B cash and asked him to buy some stuff from C's shop and pay him instantly. Now B spends the cash somewhere else and buys stuff from C's shop in credit in A's name. Now of course, B will be liable to A, but if it comes from where C will recover his money, he can recover his money from A because he has hold out B as A's agent in many previous occasions. This is creation of agency by holding out. Now the last topic of agency by implied authority, agency by necessity. The term is quite self-exclamatory in itself, right? It occurs when an agency is created in the face of some necessity or emergency situation and where the agent is in no situation to communicate with the other person. Now there are three notable scenarios in these regards. Number one, 
a pre-existing agent exceeding his authority in the face of emergency. Look, suppose I am your agent in Kolkata and look after some shipments that come in your name in Kolkata. You live in Bombay, suppose. Now in one fine case, I was supposed to send the shipments that come to Kolkata to Orissa. Now while checking the shipments to ship it to Orissa, I found out that the shipment is in a condition where there was no way that they can make it to Orisha without spoiling. In such circumstances, if I sell the shipment in Kolkata only and do not send them to Orissa, my act will be regarded as an act of an agent where the agency is created by necessity. Now the point to note here is that the agent should be in no position to communicate with his principal in this regard and the act of the agent should be bona fide and he should have the best interest of his principal in his mind. Right, so number two, when a person is entrusted with the property of another person. Suppose uh, B is entrusted with the property of A. That is, A appoints B to look after his property. Now, any act that B does with the purpose of preserving the property from any danger will be considered as an act of an agent where the agency is created by necessity. For example, a fire breakouts in the compound. Now, any act that B does to put out the fire will be considered as an act of the agent where the agency is created by necessity. This is because there was no delegation of express authority to B to do such acts, but he did them with the purpose of saving the property. And in such cases, it will be considered as an agency which has been created by necessity. Okay, so finally, the third situation where the agency by necessity can arise is in case of husband and wife. Things get really interesting here. See, a husband has a duty to maintain his wife and provide with all the necessities of life to his wife. In case he fails to do that, the wife has a right to pledge his credit and procure those necessities, pledging her husband's credit. Confused? It means that she can buy those credits from the tradesman and promise that her husband will pay for it. And the husband will be legally bound to pay for such necessities. Now, necessities doesn't mean the necessities of life, that is food, clothing and medicine. It means the necessities according to the lifestyle that the particular couple needs. So, it will vary for different couples. Now, this right of the wife is not absolute. The husband can save himself from the liabilities in the following ways. Number one, if he had expressly forbidden his wife to take credits on his name. Number two, if the substances bought were not necessities. Number three, if he can prove that he has already supplied his wife with enough fund to buy those necessities. And number four, if he had forbidden the tradesman to give credit on his name to his wife. Now, this is the case where the husband and wife cohabits, that is, they stay together. In case the husband and wife live separately, if the husband has left his wife without any fault on her side, none of these exceptions will be applicable and the wife will have absolute right to pledge her husband's credit to procure the necessities. In case the wife left the husband without any reasonable cause, she cannot pledge his husband's credit to procure any necessities. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Stay tuned for the next video in which I will discuss about the remaining two ways of creation of agency and the classification of agents. Do give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you like the channel, consider subscribing it. Also hit the little bell icon and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.